Okay, it's been three years since I built this wash bay. Uh, I made some changes here this past week, so I figured since I've got it clean, organized, I guess it's always clean and organized, but a little bit cleaner, a little more organized than normal, uh, I figured I'd make a, a three-year update video just to take you through step-by-step step each, each win, each mistake, each product that I love, each one that I want to change, and just kind of walk you through this. So expect this to be a, a long video of me taking you through each part and piece and the methodology behind why and how and all of that stuff. So when I first came to visit this house, I knew this house was here. And what, what really intrigued me about it is the, there's a port cachet or a pull through. Uh, and and uh, I figured that would be really awesome to have. And so I've been driving, this is maybe five or six years ago, driving through this neighborhood, dreaming that I could live here someday. And, and this was always the house that, that I modeled from the street. And so when we came and visited the place, uh, what I didn't realize was there's no garage here. <laughs> so there's this 5,000 square foot house. Uh, I didn't know what this, I knew there was a structure back here because you can see it from the road, but I didn't know what this building that we're standing in was. Uh, and, uh, and so we were touring the house and uh, I'm like all excited, like I'm kind of saving it for the end, like ice cream at the end of the tour. Okay, show me the garage. Uh, because my first question when I walked in the door is, well, do you have uh, you know, a garage? Unit? And she says, oh yeah, we had tons of car storage. What she meant was the port de cachet and this pole barn, which is uh, 1,200 square feet covered. So I came out here, uh, the pole barn had wood paneling on the walls. There was actually a separator right here. So there was a room inside of a room, the way that they had built this thing. And it, there's, you'll, you'll be able to see in the concrete, there's stains from battery acid from their tractors and their golf carts and things like that. Uh, and so when I came out here, it immediately clicked. I'm gonna make this a dedicated wash bay. And so we took it down to the stud. So this room was gutted. I pulled all the wood paneling off the walls, found all kinds of animals living in the walls and termites and things like that. Uh, so it was, gave me an opportunity to just gut the place clean it out, uh, treat it for termites and bugs. And uh, we actually had some rot on some of the poles out there. Uh, so I you know, tore those apart. So I took this place, the, at least this interior room, which is roughly 20 feet wide by 13 feet deep. And I had a vision for what you're looking at here today, which is cabinets, pressure washer, shelves with all of my washing equipment. Uh, and I had no intention of this being my garage for all as long as it has for the last three years. So taking it down to the studs gave me an opportunity to pre-wire it, pre-plumb it, uh, put hose bibs in, and I'm going to take you through step by step each, each, each process, each, each part and piece. So the first thing we did, and this is something that I wasn't sure of, uh, was I just chose to drywall it. Uh, now this is uh, what they call green board. So this is mold and moisture resistant. The thing I wasn't sure about was, could we do drywall out here? I mean, you can probably see me right now, I'm sweating. You know, it's probably 90-ish percent humidity at 9.30 in the morning here in Central Florida in, in mid-May. So imagine the summer heat just sits in here. This is an uninsulated, uh, unair conditioned, non air conditioned building. Uh, and so the first thing I thought was should I do some sort of cement board, uh, which would be considerably more expensive, or could we drywall it? And three years in, drywall's good. Um, I do, uh, I always paint everything flat. Uh, this is Benjamin Moore. Uh, ben line of flat paint. Uh, the color code is AC25. Uh, it's called Harbor Gray. Uh, and then the white is, uh, is just a Sherwin-Williams Pro Classic white, you know, which you put on the trim. Uh, so I'm gonna actually, you know, three years in, we get a lot of this bug stuff. You know, that's the biggest issue out here is I do get a lot of 
not proportionally being as we're in the middle of the woods, but it, there are a lot of bugs here. And so bugs come and fly around and then they die and they build up and they, you know, cobwebs and stuff gets on the walls. So we'll, we'll have to treat that stuff. Uh, and I have to kind of dust it occasionally. Uh, but uh, drywall worked out great. So I'm, I'm happy with the drywall. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repaint. Uh, when, I, when, I did, when I did this, I did this all myself. I didn't hang the drywall. Uh, but I did paint it, and I did um, um, I didn't float the drywall, or I didn't I didn't tape the drywall. So the drywall was all prepared, and then I painted and set it up. I did the baseboards. Uh, <laughs> had my painters come and fix. I thought the baseboards looked fantastic. Uh, the problem was there wasn't any light in here, so I was doing it in the kind of shade. Uh, and uh, no. my baseboard job is not to my standard, so I'm going to have the my painters come and just clean this up. Fresh coat of paint. Uh, and uh, and really clean up fill putty and fill all of the little imperfections in the baseboards just to just to refresh it We'll probably do that later this year. I also put the windows in I'm so glad I did that uh, it gets air moving through here uh, In combination with the Air King fans when I'm not videoing uh, so it, it, it does make make a big difference So the drywall worked out great the next thing I did was lighting uh, and what I have in here, these are very expensive. I think they were like $260 a piece. Eight bulb uh, fixtures from, I think the company's called AEI. And this was part of my pursuit to come up with the Obsessed Garage lighting solution, uh, which another upgrade I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna tear, take these lights out uh, and put my light fixtures in uh, at some point. These are 6,000 Kelvin bulbs. <clears throat> I'd realized uh, because I do spend a lot of time out here, I and mean, you guys have watched lots of videos if you've, if you've been a part of the channel for a while, uh, you've seen me do lots and lots of videos out here, that I was damaging my eyes, it was so bright. Again, 20 by 13, and I had uh, 32 bulbs in here. I don't know how many tens of thousands of lumens that is, <clears throat> but it's too much. Uh, and so I've done every other, so I have four. These are 6,500 Kelvin Hyperion bulbs, uh, they're decent, uh, and uh, these these fixtures again are just too much. So I'm going to take these out, put four bulb dedicated fixtures in my obsessed garage fixtures, uh, and just stick with. I'll probably go down to uh, 5,000 Kelvin. I don't know. We'll see. The the bulbs that are in my lights aren't as blue. They aren't as I guess as white. Uh, that may be why we don't have a lot of mosquitoes and a big issue out here when I'm out here in the middle of the night. Uh, I was also joking with the guys behind the cameras here that bugs really don't bother me all that much. So I'm either genetically superior or genetically flawed. <laughs> One or the other is, uh, is, is probably the, the former. So lights, simple, easy. I'll show you the lights when we go outside, what I did out there, the vapor, vapor barrier, vapor, vapor uh, uh, or I guess they're sealed enclosed lights. We'll talk about those bulbs as well. So then it was cabinets. You know, what, what was I going to do for cabinets at, at the time? I didn't have a high-end cabinet solution. I, was, uh, um, I wasn't selling any of this stuff. I wasn't, uh, I didn't, you know, Sess Garage really didn't exist. It was just Matt Mormon on YouTube right around maybe, maybe a, a, a year later is when I called it Obsess Garage. Uh, but these Saber cabinets are something that I had put in my previous garage at my previous house. Uh, and so I wanted to do it here and I wanted to do black. Uh, I wouldn't do black uh, if I have the choice again. You know, black shows, you can even see little streaks. Uh, I'll show you inside the cabinets, the, the uh, shelves tend to get, you know, tend to get beat up from sliding things in and out. And black, just like a black car, shows all the, all the issues, you know, all the, all the imperfections. But from 10 feet away, it looks great. Right now, it looks great because I have it all nice and clean. Uh, but, you know, in, in general, you, you're, you're, I, think you're, I think you're better off with silver. I tend to avoid the blues and the reds, but, uh, but these, are, these are from a company called Saber, which I, I represent. I sell these cabinets outside of two and a half, you know, double, double the price uh, going to Sonic or Lista or Moduline or something like that. There's nothing else like these cabinets on the market. Just the, the stoutness of the drawers, 
the glides, how much they hold, uh, the 18 gauge steel. Uh, they're just simple. Uh, they're not, um, they're lacking a lot of the, the features that say something like New Age would have where they have soft close hinges or they have you know, wire management. I don't think you need any of that stuff. Um, I think what that does is makes, makes things uh, flimsier. So a, a common competitor would be a New Age, I guess their, uh, their Pro, Pro Series. Uh, these are just, it's hard to explain. You know, I've, I've had them both in my hands. I actually bought a New Age cabinet and then I bought an upper from Sabre way back when in my previous garage. And I just kind of held and touched and felt them for a week. I put them both on the wall and there was just, there's just, it's hard to explain, but these are just better uh, for a little bit more money than, than a New Age cabinet. Uh, but nowhere near the cost of something like, like Sonic. So a mistake I made here is, again, this was intended to be my wash bay only, and I'm going to build a garage out back. Well, it's been three years, and I still haven't built the garage, largely because of the cost. I mean, the garage is going to cost, I don't know, $300,000. So I don't know how much money you guys think I have, but that's a lot of money. Uh, and it would basically render this property over, you know, way overbuilt. But I do want to build that garage at some point. Uh, and so what I wish I had done out here is I wish I did four six drawer cabinets uh, because you'll see, you know, I have Kaizen foam cut. Uh, so each drawer here has various stuff. I haven't Kaizen these bottoms because I have too much stuff to put in them. Uh, but if I had six drawer cabinets, I'd be able to Kaizen foam, cut these all out and have all of my tools hyper organized. Uh, this is my original tool set prior to buying any Sonic stuff. Uh, and these, you know, these drawers, I wish I had more of them because uh, I have, you know, I have these drawers where I have extra stuff in them. So that's one thing that I've even considered doing here in my future 2.0 version of the wash bay is take out these bottoms, put in six drawers, uh, and I'm going to replace the countertop. So this is in the works. So another thing, uh, three year update, you can see the dents and dings and the seam um, in, in, the, uh, in these stainless. So these are the Sabre stainless tops. I'm done with stainless. Uh, I'm gonna figure out a way. Uh, my, you know, my friend Mark, friend and customer client, uh, Mark is is helping me design and build a series of butcher block type countertops. We're gonna look at different wood types, whether we do birch or maple or something like that. Uh, and I just don't like yellow wood. Uh, it reminds me of like my grandpa. So I want to do something stained or like an ebony or a dark gray and light gray and give, give, give people some options. Plus I, in this particular case, I want to get rid of the seam. And I know that's going to cost me a thousand bucks to have it shipped here, but you don't have a choice. They don't make these things big enough. They make them big enough so they're shippable. Same thing with Sonic, same thing with Lista, same thing with pretty much everybody. Uh, if you want, at some point you'll have to have a seam, uh, but I would want to, I would want a dialed, glued, much better structured seam than just this weather stripping that I have where I'm starting to get a little bit of float where it's expanding. Plus stainless looks great day one. And then from then on out, a patina or scratch on stainless doesn't give you the same character that you get from wood. So the bigger question, longer term question, we're going to have to figure out for myself and others is what about the humidity out here and expansion contraction of wood? So we're going to work on a system, a clip type system to figure out how to, how to do that to give people an option. We will still have stainless, uh, but I'm going to be swapping this out for uh, the stainless out for, for, uh, for wood. Then if you remember, most of you who've watched my videos know that I had a 65 inch Panasonic uh, VT50 plasma out here for years uh, that you never saw turned on. Uh, I used it a lot in, in, in my previous garage before I started making videos. Now, at least 75% of the time I'm out here, I've got a camera set up. Uh, and so just this past week, uh, I put these new uppers in place. They actually don't match because Sabres changed the finish. The finish is a little nicer on the new cabinet, so it's not a perfect match. 
and it's also now they're completely welded, so they come assembled. Where previously we had, you know, these were come in four sections or four pieces. There are actually five pieces, including the back where you would build and put it together. So we, my dad and I mounted these cabinets this weekend. The place actually feels a lot bigger, just to show you what's in each cabinet. My methodology here is screws, fasteners in here, nails, uh, staples. Uh, this cabinet is power, so I actually I had a power outlet there from the plasma, so I bought one of these uh, Defiant from Home Depot, uh, a little power strip so I could put my Milwaukee charger, my Phoenix flashlight charger, keep my smaller, um, they try to use these more than anything, my little M12 uh, impact and M12 uh, um, drill. I now find myself with, with extra space. I'll keep my, you know, whatever camera I have out here. Uh, then I have some, you know, basic detailing stuff, overflow from the shelves, uh, and then finally, you know, oils and anything to do with, you know, the house and stuff. I had a lot more stuff out here, but I threw most of it away. You know, I had caulk and putty and just stuff I've acquired that I realized I have a, I have an affinity for having supplies and having stuff. And I know many guys are like this in their garage, but Home Depot is like a mile and a half down the street. And I know this is wasteful, but I, I have this weird tendency to hold on to certain things and then throw it away two years later. I try to keep a two or two and a half month rule, which is a little harder with tools and things like that, because you don't know when you're gonna need wasp spray. Uh, but you know, I had things like I had three different bottles of uh, PVC uh, glue, and uh, and, and I, don't, I don't need that, so I threw two of them away. And I had wood putty and things like that, so that that probably will go bad by the time I need it anyway. And so I cleaned a lot of this stuff out, you know, throwing it away. These uppers. So when we design, when I designed this, uh, and I'd recommend you do this if you have wooden studs. I ran a 12 by or a 10 by two by 10 stringer all the way across at two different levels. Uh, so the countertop height out here is 38, so 38 and a half, 38 and a quarter. Um, you may want to come a little bit higher. I find this height to be nice. Uh, I think the Sabre, I'm sorry, the Sonic cabinets that I have at the other garage, I think they're 41. So three inches higher, uh, but these are mounted to the wall. I, I don't like the feet that come with these cabinets, so I would recommend you mount them. If you have a block wall, just use tap cons, go right into the block. Here, again, I did a stringer all the way across. I did a stringer for these cabinets here and a stringer for the TV. Uh, luckily, I was able to hit the studs on the new cabinets here, but each cabinet is held in with uh, 5 16th lags, so I have four five sixteenths lags in each of the uppers and I have a boatload of lags in the in the lowers. The countertops are also held with uh, with quarter inch long quarter inch size lags as well so it's sturdy. I have two by six construction out here again not insulated. So power when we pre-wired this for power I did everything dedicated uh, to this 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 building out here I think I have a 150 amp service uh, that, that we brought out here. We trenched all the way back from the main service of the house. Uh, and each outlet is 20 amp rated. Uh, and so I have two different banks of dedicated 20 amps. Uh, and we'll go over the pressure washer here in a minute, but the pressure washer also has a dedicated circuit as well. So the outlets are on a dedicated, two dedicated 20s. The light fixtures are on two separate dedicated 20s. Uh, I wanted to have overhead rather than doing 15. I think if you're doing any kind of garage, just do 20, 20 amps, do as many circuits as you can fit. Uh, it never hurts to, to have that extra, extra juice, if you will. Uh, let's see, what else do I have in here? I'll gr we'll grab B-roll of all the, all the drawers and cabinets. So you can see I have quite a bit of extra space out here, extra room. Uh, so I have pads. Most of my polishing stuff I keep over at the garage now. So I just have two of each pad, uh, a bottle of each polish, and then a three inch and a five inch polisher just in case I needed to do something here. 
uh, all the rest of the polishing stuff is back at, at the, at the um, OGHQ. Uh, so in here I keep, you know, overflow of, you know, machines, jigsaw, stuff like that, Sawzall uh, in, in, this, in this cabinet, some fasteners, uh, or overflow fasteners, the uh, uh, zip ties, which I use a lot. And then we have the closets. So these are, and by the way, these are 30, roughly 30 by 30. These are roughly 30 by 30 as well, a little bit deeper. So these are about 12 and change deep. These are about 24 deep. Uh, and so uh, the closets on the side, they make this in a, I think these are like, like four feet wide. Uh, they also make a, uh, a smaller version of it as well. Uh, but in here is where I'll generally keep and what I'm probably going to do here, uh, which I did on the bottom shelf, is did my Swiss Trax flooring in the cabinet so I wouldn't mangle or completely destroy the, the bottom or base of the cabinet. But you'll see, this is part of the disadvantage of black, you'll see staining that happens when I drag my, my shop vac in here. You know, I'm scratching, which I know that's part of the game in the garage, but, um, and I do use this place, oh, shoot, you know, three, four times a week. Uh, so, you know, that's part of the deal. But if I can make it look nice and keep it looking nice, I'd rather do that. So I'm likely going to cut some Swiss tracks for these shelves as well. Uh, so that way I can slide things in and out. I, I have a power outlet, infamous video. If you guys have been watching a long time, uh, this is the cabinet that I cut the hole in the wrong side uh, and I'm cutting it with all of the wrong tools. So uh, I didn't have the tools that I needed to, to do this. Uh, so this cabinet has a hole, but I have, an, I have a, a specific outlet that I put in the corner of each so that I have power uh, to both, both cabinets. Uh, this is a old Griot's garage um, paper towel holder, magnetic paper towel holder in here. So, uh, Ego leaf blower. I'm going to be doing, we'll talk about this in a minute, we're going to be going to doing a Mosmatic drying system out here, but I hate having to get out a vacuum cleaner. So I hate even more having to get out a something like a the MetroVac Master Blaster. I could mount it to the wall, but there'd be no way to make it look super clean. I don't like the hose on the thing. So the Ego Blower, Ego 530 or 580 CFM blower, I think is the way to go for drying in any application. I've had them all. Uh, the, the, I haven't had the big boy, but it's the same freaking thing as the Metrovac, so it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, since we're on the subject of cabinets, let me show you the other cabinet here. This is where I have my network switch. So, internet. So, getting, and this opened up a whole other conversation, getting internet out here. Uh, I have a ubiquity access point up on the ceiling, uh, and then I have a ubiquity network switch out here. Uh, the intent, I just haven't done it yet, this is also part of 2.0, is to put cameras out here. Uh, the, you know, it'd be nice to have the ability to have some cameras so I can, you know, see what's going on. Uh, I could just buy some Nest cameras or, you know, we're going to do, um, so we're probably going to do some, a Vigilon or something fancy out here, my buddy Ramel. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out for me, but we have a network switch. I have this, this building wired. Uh, we have Cat6 run throughout in the corners, uh, up under the wash bay in here. So I have the ability, we're going to put cameras all over the place in here for the fun of it. Uh, I don't really need a lot of security out here, but I do have a, a Unify uh, A-port switch. Uh, my old Yamaha RXV800 powers my, uh, my Dynaudio Excite X12s and then the Excite Center. I just have three uh, 3.1 setup out here. Uh, I originally put the center channel because I had the TV. Well, now I just leave the center channel just for a little bit more amplitude. Uh, we're not getting good imaging in here anyway. I'm you know firing off of a metal countertop with metal buildings or sorry metal uh, cabinets. Uh, but the Yamaha XV800 will probably be replaced. Uh, I just replaced a bunch of stuff in my home theater, so I actually have an Integra DHC 80.3, really fancy 
uh, older uh, preamp. Uh, so what I might do is do something like Outlaw Audio Mono Box, <laughs> just do complete overkill uh, for these for these little you know high end little speakers. I think these are like fifteen hundred bucks a pair. I think the center channel is another thousand bucks or so. So these are really nice bookshelves in the entry-level Dynaudio line uh, that I may give them a little bit cleaner, better power. Uh, the volume control on my RXV 800s finally kind of died and the remote control stopped working. I mean, this thing is almost 20 years old now. Mm -hmm.